Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of three phase SPWM rectifier in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. This is the MATLAB model of a three phase SPWM rectifier. So, what is that we are trying to do over here? We have a three phase universal bridge based on thyristors and consequently we have a three phase source over here. So each of them are single phase source connected such that they are displaced by 120 degree uh, phase shift apart and consequently we will be producing three phase over here. This is compared with a carrier signal which is basically uh, a sawtooth generator. So you comparing the sinusoidal signal with the sawtooth generator which is having higher frequency in comparison with the fundamental signal. So that that is basically 50 hertz over here. This is basically the carrier frequency. I will be setting up up to 20 kilohertz over here consequently these two signals will be compared the output that is obtained we will invert it using a logical operator and give it to the multiplexer the multiplexer will be giving it the gate signals to the thyristor since each thyristor there are six thyristors in universal bridge we need six signals which are basically the inputs so these six signals are generated in the same order and they are given in the same sequence if you interchange any of the sequences then the signals will not be uh, reach it to the universal bridge in the same order so be very careful with respect to it so using multiplexer multiple signals can be tapped and it will be given to the gating block of the thyristor bridge consequently a dc output voltage can be obtained and a capacitor is used in order to filter the amount of output voltage like in order to get less amount of ripple as far as possible we'll be using a capacitor filter so once the basic idea of what are we trying to do is understood we will be able to start the simulation so let's go to matlab and start our simulation over there here we are in matlab so we have a simulink library browser where we can search for the components that we want at the first place we will be requiring a power gear block so search for PowerQ and add that this is basically the compiler if you don't have PowerQ, it will be unable to synchronize the circuit and understand what are the blocks that are used in the circuit so it will basically understand all the blocks that are there uh, and helps us in the simulation process so we will be requiring a voltage measurement block so add the voltage measurement block as well and we will be requiring an AC voltage source search for AC voltage and add that block so once that is done we will be requiring uh, a universal bridge search for universal bridge and you will be uh, getting it right over here so add that block as well we'll be requiring a series rlc branch which is basically the load that we are going to use so add that apart from that we will be requiring a scope in order to see the waveform output waveform search for scope and add that block we also need a ground which is basically used uh, in order to ground the circuit of the supply that we're using so search for ground scroll a little down choose this one so there are a lot of ground electrical reference that are there in blue color so be very very careful you have to choose this one if you choose the black one over here that is for rf signals so be very careful so add this block so once that is done we will be requiring a multiplexer search for max and uh, you will be getting it uh, over here at this block apart from that i will be requiring a sawtooth generator search for sawtooth and you will be getting uh, the sawtooth generator over here so add this block as well so uh, we also need a relational operator which is basically used to compare the two signals that is the fundamental and the sawtooth generator block so add that block as well so we have added almost all the blocks that are required so we will place them in appropriate positions so that we can get started with our circuit connections so uh, the supply should be coming at this point and uh, the power cube block is usually placed at the top now let us uh, before copy pasting this now let us enter the parameters so the peak amplitude is 325.15 so a lot of students make mistake over here so this is not 230 so be very careful 230 into root 2 they've asked us the peak amplitude that is vm so be very careful with respect to this step so once that is done the frequency that i'm going to choose according to indian standards is 50 hertz you can try it for different like 60 hertz uh, as per united states and all the other country standards so I'll be placing them in this particular uh, way and I'll be connecting the common terminals together. So A to A, B to B and C to C. 
so some of the most important things to remember here is to change the phase angle degree that is minus 120 over here that is uh, if you consider a b c b should be one minus 120 with respect to a that is the phase shift between each of them should be minus 120 degree that is 120 degree as a whole isn't it so that is why i'm doing that so once that is done this should be minus 240 and uh, the ground should be given over here in this particular fashion so we have done that we will be requiring voltage measurement block in order to measure the voltages so connect it uh, over here with respect to ground we will be requiring another ground block so copy paste that and um, apart from that now one of the most important things to remember sawtooth generator should come as the first signal over here if you carefully observe so over here i will be setting the frequency to 20 kilohertz so over here if you interchange this if this is coming at this point and this is coming at this point then again the nature of output waveform will be totally different so that is why you have to be very careful they should be coming at this particular point so the voltage uh, is given the whatever voltage is obtained at this point with respect to uh, the line and ground it will be available over here so it is basically the phase voltages okay so again I will be uh, taking a couple of them so copy paste that and uh, the negative terminals can be connected to a common point again I'll be requiring another one and uh, connect it over here and the negative terminal can be connected to this point so I will again require a couple of relational operators uh, so I'll be connecting them in this particular fashion so the positive terminals should be the first terminal of uh, these blocks should be connected together and the second because the signal the carrier signal is the same for all the three isn't it but only thing is the fundamental frequency with respect to different phases will be available and that is what we are trying to compare with the the carrier signal again this is with respect to this particular block once this is done we will be requiring a logical not operator so let us search for logical operator and uh, you will be getting it uh, right over here add the and logical operator we can change it to not by double clicking and uh, selecting not over here once this is done give it to this particular block again we need a couple of them so copy paste copy paste another one and uh, connect it in this particular fashion so now we need six signals at the input of the mux so how do we do that so change the number of inputs to six and slightly enlarge this so that we have to be very careful with the connections over here so if you do a small mistake definitely the output will not be the anticipated one so we have to be very careful not terminals always connected to the uh, even ones so the odd signals should be directly connected to the tapping that is obtained after the relational operator and uh, once that is done i will be able to give the signal to the gating block of the thyristor bridge now let us rotate this and uh, select a resistive load so you can try it for different loads as well so we would be requiring a capacitor filter in case you would like to filter the amount of ripple contents that are there so let me set this to 1000 uh, uh, microfarad and uh, i'll be connecting it between these two points in this particular fashion so once this is done I'll be having a voltage measurement to block to measure the output voltage and uh, that can be seen in the scope by directly giving it to the scope of the uh, scope block. So once that is done, now we have entered all the parameters and we have chosen the capacitor resistor values. The gating signals are given to the thyristor bridge. So, so now we can change this to MOSFETs. So if you're using MOSFETs as the bridge, now we can uh, set the simulation time to one second and click on run. So let us uh, double click on the scope in order to see the nature of output waveform that we get. So usually thyristors are used for a uh, single phase AC like whenever there is an AC source. But over here, let us try to experiment by using MOSFET. So if you double click on the scope, you're getting a DC voltage over here in this particular fashion and uh, this is exactly what uh, we are supposed to get with respect to the output waveform so the ripple is slightly there so you can further reduce this by selecting a suitable value of capacitor so i hope you were able to simulate uh, a three phase spwm rectifier on your own in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video thank you